Good day, my name is Leon. Thanks for watching this video. This video is an update of our ITR14. Uh, if you have previously watched the video on our ITR14 template within DraftWorks, um, you should know most of what I'm going to tell you today. But this is just updating for some of the new features and changes that we've made since we released it originally. So uh, what we have done, one of our recent updates, you'll see that there is now a taxation section that appears on your DraftWorks screen when you're inside a client. If you click on that, you'll see that there is an ITR 14 sitting in there. Now, at this stage, if you opened or created this client uh, before we released our ITR 14, that might be blank. So it would then be necessary for you to pull in um, that template into your existing client. Very easy to do. Go to your client setup, and there you will see at the top in the ribbon bar under client setup, there is an import ITR 14. Now, if you have opened the client uh, a little while ago, and there is already an ITR 14, but you haven't yet done any work on it, my advice is to go and refresh that so that you always know that you have got the latest template available in your file. And it's just simply clicking and it just asks for a confirmation that you want to overwrite the existing file. Please don't do that if you've already done work in that file, otherwise you will lose that work. This overwrites replaces that document. Okay, so I'm going to overwrite. I now have the latest version. Okay, let me go back into my taxation and let's open up that ITR 14. Now, I have already imported a trial balance. It looks a little funny. I just wanted to try and include as many line items as possible when we get to our ITR 14 itself. So um, you'll see that in a moment. But this is obviously for a client existing. It has been worked on. You probably have worked on the financials already. And now you're just wanting to get ready to submit the tax return. It does have a guidance sheet, which takes you through most of the information that you would need to know. Uh, but if you are watching this video, you will hopefully be able to complete the ITR 14 quite easily. We have a tax calc sheet, which is largely a copy of what is already existing inside our financial statements template. However, there are a number of additions to this sheet. Now, first and foremost, there are a number of questions that you need to answer regarding the nature of the entity. Now, firstly, does this entity qualify for small or micro business tax? The reason for that question is, if that is a yes, we don't calculate at 28%. You need to manually go and insert the small business or the micro business taxation in your tax calc sheet below, based on whatever the turnover for micro or um, the profit is for a small business corporation. Uh, the next two questions relate to the, the way your ITR 14 is going to appear on e-filing. Now, if you are a share block or a body corporate, there are specific disclosures that are included on your ITR 14, which aren't there for medium and large. So you do need to go and make sure you select the appropriate. If it's a yes here to share block, you'll see that automatically it has changed the entity, um, what the identifier as it tells me now it's a share block company. If you do need to change it, there is a drop down available. Um, if, for in, if for any reason that formula has gotten lost or damaged, you can go and override. This is very important to make the selection because it does affect the layout of the ITR 14 sheet when we get there. I'm going to go back to no. Based on your turnover or total assets, it should also distinguish between a medium to large business and a small business. So uh, do be on the lookout uh, for that as well, just to make sure that, that your linking is correct and appropriate in order to distinguish the correct entity size, entity type. All right, I'll come back to that all items, um, and then we can just see what that selection is all about. Now, when we get to the actual tax calculation, there are obviously a number of addbacks and deductions that need to be made on this client. And you'll see there is a space for add back and deduct in the current year, but also there is a column for prior year in case you do want to fill in both years on this form, just for completeness sake. Now the description is not a cell that you go and type in, there is a drop down available with all the possible options 
depending on the size of the client that you have selected. So if you go and select dormant, there will be nothing here because there are no available deductions or addbacks for dormant companies because there are no transactions. Now, if I go and select accounting interest received or receivable, that first item there, and uh, I'm actually going to go and put the next item in the next line, accounting profit on disposal of fix and or other assets. And I'm going to go and put a value for an add back in the first and a deduction in the second. Now what you'll immediately see is that it tells me that there's an invalid selection. The reason that it is telling me it's an invalid selection is this line item in itself is a deduction, not an add back. So it's immediately picking up that there's an error in what I've included here. If you are wanting to get um, some of the add backs, what you need to do is go and put the value into add back first, and then your drop down menu will include all the add backs and not any of the deductions. If I hit that drop down, you'll see that the first line item already there is now interest paid, not interest received as it was earlier. Let's go and change that item, put the deduction in and you will see that the invalid selection um, option uh, warning goes away. Now in the prior, let's go and put a value in there. Now it is giving me a value error. Why? Because that is now an add back. It's positive. It needs to be negative because it is a deduction. Let's go and put minus in and that then accepts the value. Okay, need to do the next line as well and if it works the other way around it also also give me a value error for the deduction. Okay, so ideally what you should do is go and um, put the value in first, then you know you are getting the correct list of addbacks or deductions. Now when we're dealing with any of the smaller entity sizes, what you will see the listing becomes shorter, but then there becomes a other deductions option at the very bottom of the listing, and that's where you'd need to park some of these items that for a larger entity, you're actually separately disclosing on your ITR 14. Now, these descriptions also become very important because you need to select the appropriate descriptions when you are preparing your ITR 14. And we'll go and have a look at that in detail just now. As I get to the bottom, the same reconciliation is in place here as it is on um, the financial statements template. So from there, everything looks just like your financials. And you can probably copy and paste the values from your financial statements into this template um, for use in your tax calculation. All right, now what I just want to point out as well in this template, we do have a management info sheet. I haven't included much in my uh, client setup, so this is looking very blank at the moment. We do have the full balance sheet and income statement, in fact, the detailed income statement, directly from the financial statements. Before you go any further in this template, please just do go and make sure that the profit you're coming up with here is the same as it is in your financial statements, as well as the totals on your balance sheet. Just in case you have made any unusual changes to the um, uh, link numbers or any of the formulas on your financial statements, you'd need to carry those over into this template as well in order to ensure that everything is included correctly. All right, so please do just double check that for us. Now I can go into my ITR 14. Now the ITR 14, there are multiple uh, different layouts available. Based on your selection here, it'll change and open the correct layout only. So if you are dealing with a medium to large enterprise, don't worry. You do not need to open up the micro. It's not applicable. You can just focus on what you're working on over here. Completing the details on the ITR 14 uh, sheet itself is quite important. Uh, within DraftWorks, there are not necessarily distinctions for all the things that the ITR 14 wants you to do. So, for instance, if we look at our non-current assets, there are eight line items for long-term loans. And this isn't group loans and subsidiary loans and shareholder loans. This is looking for interest-free and interest-bearing um, loans to be split, for your connected and non-connected to be split, split, as well as your local and foreign. So um, we just go and dump all our long-term loans that you have on your financials into one line item. Uh, it is up to you to go and give the split where necessary. So as soon as I put a 5000 into that line item, well, I shouldn't say 50000 let me say 5000 you'll see that that is now changed from 50000 to 45000 
So this will all balance out in the end. It's always going to total um, the same amount. So it's not going to affect your balance sheet. So please go and insert. You'll see that there is some assistance given. Um, each cell does have a little dialog box that comes up, tells you what you're supposed to be doing. Some of them are quite a bit longer. Again, if you are getting one or two of the wrong items popping up there, um, it may just be something that's gone funny on that template. Um, and uh, we can help you just sort that out if you do, are looking for that information. But in general, most of the items are going to be pretty self-explanatory. Self it is important to provide details uh, for uh, descriptions for the other non-current assets, other whatever it may be. And the reason for that is when you're actually filling in the ITR 14, you do need to give other uh, information as well. You do need to give a description for those items. So we have included a cell for that. Okay, scrolling down a little bit further, um, current assets. Uh, now in a previous template we kept everything positive, but what we have now done is the less items do come in as a negative. So if you are needing to put in a provision for debtors excluding trade debtors, that's these two items work together. As soon as I put in that negative value, you'll see that it changes that from a 15 to a 20. And the idea is that that total remains 15 once again. Non-current liabilities, there is the same requirement to split between those eight different categories for the long-term loans. I'm not going to go through that again. The idea is just go and fill in, look out for these green cells and complete the information as necessary. The gross trade and other payables, you are needing to split between items that are not older than three years and items that are older than three years. As you go to smaller entity sizes, the, the line items do decrease. Uh, this is a large client, so this is going to have everything in there on that ITR 14. I'm not going to go through detail of all the items. You can go and have a look at all the information that's required. Uh, basically, however, we're not changing the bottom line. We are just moving amounts between various items depending on uh, what the description is. When I scroll further down, we come now to our tax calc. We get to our net profit for the year, and here is our tax calculation. And this will automatically pull through all the addbacks and deductions as we completed them on our tax calc, and it puts them in the appropriate location on this template for us. However, in this case, what we have done in the tax computation is we do keep everything positive. It is just easier for completions purposes in this case. Um, but there we go. There are a lot of line items and you'll see that there's a lot of space. There are blue lines. So if you do print the template, it will not print the empty lines. It'll only print the items that are uh, actually in use. However, if you are completing your tax return directly from your DraftWorks file into the ITR 14, go to the tax calc and this is where that items in use comes in handy. When I go back here, uh, you'll see that it is hidden all the excess rows for me. So it's a bit easier to work through and follow. However, on the balance sheet side and on the income statement side, all of these line items print irrespective of whether um, there is a value or not, so we still do show all the line items um, in this case. We don't want to uh, give the impression that you can skip any of these by hiding them. You do need to insert values if they are applicable and necessary. What you will do on the ITR 14 now is when you get to your non-taxable amounts credited to the income statement, it brings up a little menu where you go and select exactly which ones you need and that's why we've inserted the code and the description here for you. You can just go and tick those two items in this case, fill in the details. This item in that case, tick that one, fill in the details, and your tax calc will be completed. All right, so that is the completion of the ITR 14 uh, template. Um, you can go and add additional management info. So if your firm has a, a, a third person who does the actual completion of the tax returns. It's not to you yourself. You can print this quite nicely. It gives you your balance sheet and income statement always to refer back to. It gives you a bit of management info if you've got details like addresses and things in there. And then you've got exactly the line items as per the ITR 14. And they are pretty much in the same order that you will see them on the ITR 14 as well. So it is going to be a very easy process to transfer it from this document over to 
your tax return and also then when you get to your tax return you're not sitting with a calculator trying to work out well what is admin fees now and what um, so must I add bank charges or what must I add where the calculations are done for you you can check this information before it is sent to whomever is going to be completing the tax return it will make life quite a lot easier However, we do not stop here. There is also the opportunity to import this information directly into ACFIN, specifically ACFIN Sky, although I think it will work with the desktop versions as well. And for that reason, when you are in your ITR 14, you will see that there is a taxation tab and it has a button there saying export to ACFIN. As I click that button, it just asks me to give a location to save it. Here's my tax test file. 2014.csv. It's saving, in my case, just to my desktop. I click Save, and you can then email that uh, file to somebody, or if you are using ACFIN yourself, uh, I will quickly take you through the import process. So here we are within ACFIN Sky, and you will see under the financial info in the ITR14 uh, working page, there is a trial balance button. As you click on that, it opens up a dialog uh, I have previously imported here. So I'm just going to re-click on import TB CSV. That is what we're doing. And then I can click on browse to go and find my document on desktop. There it is. Now I need to use the separator. Click on next. It is comma delimited. And what we've also done is that the first row contains field names, so it automatically picks up the correct codes within ACFIN. Click on Next again, and Next once more, and there we go. We are importing the trial balance. Once it's complete, click on Finish. I can close that item. Now, sorry, before I close that, I just want to point out that at the moment, our trial balance, you will see, is not in balance. The reason for that is that at the moment we are already exporting the tax codes, but ACFIN does not yet import the tax adjustment codes, I should say. So there are items within here which um, don't balance completely yet. So don't be too concerned at this point that things don't balance. However, when we do get to our balance sheet, please do just go and make sure that the balances here are in agreement with the financial statements. That why, that's why we include the balance sheet income statement as well. And on this line item, your control total must be equal to zero. Otherwise, there is a problem with the trial balance or the export or something. Um, also, please do check the income statement. Make sure that the profit and loss is coming out correctly. At this stage, as I say, ACFIN doesn't yet pull in the tax calc, uh, so you will need to open up the tax calculation, just scroll a little bit to the right, however, all the tax codes appear on that ITR 14 template, so it'll be nice and quick and easy for you to go and complete the information. Uh, if you have any queries re regarding how to use the SkyTax import, uh, please do contact ACFIN, uh, we don't actually do any of the support, I'm just showing this to you to show you how quick and easy it will be if you are an Ackford Sky user and want to import the tax return information from Draftworks. That is all from me. Thank you very much for your time. Please hop onto our remote support if you have any further questions or need any assistance. We'll be glad to help you. Thanks very much. Goodbye.